we're going full fun bun here today, folks. We don't have the time, we don't, we don't have the luxury of wearing our hair down and being carefree. No, this is, it's time to get down to business. The day that we learned about color theory in my makeup school, my teacher at the time, Katie, came in with like um, orange eyeshadow and like orange lipstick and stuff. And she was like, I wanted to do a monochromatic uh, makeup look for you guys for color theory. And I was like, I wanna do that in my color theory video. So here I am with my color on. Let's do this. If you've been watching me for a long time, <sighs> you've been waiting for this video for a few years. <laughs> Here's the thing, every time I think about doing this video, I get so overwhelmed because there's so much that goes into color theory and there's so much that goes into color theory relating to makeup that it's just like, I don't even know where to begin, but I just need to do it at this point. So I'm just doing it. Color theory is something that might seem kind of boring or something that's like super simple and obvious to some people, but it is so helpful, um, especially in the realm of like beauty and makeup, if that's something that you are interested in, which I'm kind of assuming you are if you're here. So anyways, I'm just gonna jump right into it. I'm gonna start at like the very, very beginning. Dawn of time, okay? And uh, we can just go from there. This video will be one of many tangents. I'm sorry in advance, I can't contain myself. I'm gonna be showing you guys the color wheel made up out of eyeshadows. I grabbed this idea from Jay Kissa. I was watching her color theory video. It's great. I would definitely go check it out. I'll link it down below. And I just thought this was a really good way of kind of showing um, visually the color wheel uh, through makeup. So we're gonna start by building our primary color wheel. So primary colors, yellow, red, and blue. Then we have our tones or our shades, which is white and black, ebony and ivory together in Harmony, okay. So every color that you can imagine is made up of these three colors and these two shades. So these three colors are our primary color wheel. When we mix these shades together, that's when you start building your secondary color wheel. So red and yellow creates orange, red and blue creates purple, yellow and blue creates green. Something that I wanna really stress here because this is something that people start to get frustrated by when they try to mix their own colors. Like let's say you're mixing like cream color bases or lipsticks or whatever. Um, or even when you're blending eyeshadows together, people get frustrated because they find that colors are starting to get muddy. It is very important that your primary colors are true primary colors. Sometimes people will take a blue that's more of like a teal kind of thing um, or a yellow that's a little bit more orange or a red that's a little bit more blue based. That's going to shift the way Way that you're mixing colors. So these have to be true blue, true red, true yellow. If it's not, you're not going to get um, the expected color out of your mixing. So this is our secondary color wheel. From here, you go into your tertiary color wheel. That is mixing your primary with your secondary color. So when you mix yellow and green, you get yellow green. Green and blue, you get blue green. Blue and purple, you get, oh, excuse me. Blue purple, blurple. Red and purple, Get, get out of the way. You get red, purple, purple, red. I don't know how they refer to it. Red and orange makes a uh, red orange or orange red and yellow and orange makes yellow orange. So that is our tertiary color wheel. And from there, it just goes on and on and on. When we're looking at like more neon colors and stuff like that, like let's say we wanted a neon green, you can start by adding more of that yellow to create that lightness, but you can also add that white to really brighten up that shade and create more of a neon color. Then when we're looking at deeper shades, like let's say a really rich plum, you could either deepen it with black or you can deepen it with the complementary color, which will start to neutralize it and also make it darker. So I just wanna point a few things out about this color wheel. So a great thing to keep in mind and to kind of have memorized is complementary colors. So complementary colors is when you go directly across um, from one color to the next on the color wheel. So complementary of yellow would be purple, complementary of blue would be orange, complementary of red would be green, and so on and so forth. This is super helpful when you're building and creating looks because a lot of the times people ask the question like, how do you know what colors to pair together and stuff like that? And it seems really daunting when it's colors that seem so different from each other. So I'm just gonna quickly go through some kind of color schemes. So, so the first color scheme would be an analogous color scheme, which is basically just pairing three groups of color that are beside each other on the color wheel. So for instance, I could choose yellow, green, and blue, and those colors together are gonna create a really nice kind of like harmonious color scheme that's gonna look really beautiful and like obvious. So that's a super foolproof 
foolproof way to start kind of um, using colors together. This is also a really easy way to start learning how to blend and make sure that your colors aren't going to turn out muddy because when you're working with these colors that are so close to each other on the color wheel, they're always going to blend into each other really beautifully. Whereas if you're working with like, let's say a uh, yellow and a purple, you might kind of be experiencing some more um, muddiness because when you pair complementary colors, you create brown. But we'll get into more of that later. So on my hand here, I'll show you. This is just always gonna create really seamless blending. We have our yellow, and then you can kind of start mixing in that green. And when you start kind of mixing them together, it's really easy to start getting that really nice gradient. And as I build up that color, it's not going to create any muddiness, any kind of brown or anything like that. So if muddiness is something that you struggle with, you might want to kind of go back to basics and start playing around with colors that are closer to each other on the color wheel. Then you have monochromatic color schemes. So that is just basically varying shades of one color. So for instance, I could have like this orange and then I could have a little bit of a deeper orange, a little bit of a brighter orange. And this is always going to be very visually appealing feeling as well. It's also kind of nice um, to keep monochromatic color schemes in mind when you're thinking about like blush pairings and lip pairings and stuff like that, which is another thing I know a lot of people struggle with. They'll create this really beautiful eye look with some color, but then when they go to put their blush on, they feel like it's not really like making sense. Let's say you had an orange eyeshadow on, you could pick a blush that had a little bit more of an orange tone to it. And when I say monochromatic, I don't mean that it has to be the exact same color of orange all the way through. It can be something that's shifting more orange and same thing with like your lips you could pair it with a lip that shifts a little bit more orange as well and it might look a little less off to you than say pairing it with a blush that was like a pink that was more blue based if you're wanting to kind of branch out and play around a little bit more you can also do triadic color schemes so that's basically just um, using the color wheel in an exact triangle so you could pair kind of like a ready purple with a nice blue green and a nice yellow orange and that's gonna create a really kind of more unique but still really visually appealing um, color scheme and that's where you get into kind of more creative looks because they're not as obvious and simple as like an analogous color scheme or a monochromatic color scheme and that kind of might help you like if you're pulling up a picture of a color wheel you can just look it up online you can kind of start to visualize how colors might pair well together and then that's where you can really start playing around and being creative then we of course have complementary colors which I mentioned before so that's just anything that's directly across from each other on the color wheel so that could even be like this ready purple and that yellow green the issue that we can run into with complementary colors is that as I mentioned before when you mix complementary colors you get brown and brown never did anybody no wrong you know what I mean it's a good color it works however when you're blending together let's say eyeshadows on the eye and stuff like that you can start to kind of see that muddiness coming through and this can be particularly difficult when you're dealing with colors that are not primary or secondary and they're not as obvious as to why they're pulling it so muddy on the eye so for example you know I have to pull the subculture palette for this let's say I wanted to mix um, new wave and axis together when we're just looking at that palette we're we're kind of looking at it and thinking like, okay, that's more or less a blue and that's more or less a yellow. So in your mind, you're gonna kind of be like, okay, that's almost like an analogous color theme because we've got our yellow and our blue. So realistically, those will blend together really beautifully and maybe I'll have a little bit of a green situation happening that could be really cool. But the problem with that is that Axis is actually more of a blue green and it does have more of that kind of yellow pulling into it. And New Wave is more of an orange yellow. So you have that orange pulling in to it and suddenly you notice that you're branching further and further out on that color wheel to the point where you're almost at complementary colors. And that's where you kind of start to get this muddiness in the middle where it doesn't look quite right and you're kind of left thinking like, what did I do wrong here? Because I thought these would pair together so beautifully. And complementary colors can look really gorgeous um, when combined, but when you start looking more at color, you'll start being able to see like, okay, I can see how that color is pulling a little bit more orange, a little bit more blue, whatever it may be. And then you can kind of reference back to your color wheel and say like, okay, that's not a true blue. So I know that it's not gonna create a perfect green. And then that's when you can kind of start looking at it with more of an artistic eye and say, okay, I know that Axis isn't that true blue and I know that New Wave isn't that true yellow. And because of that, it's going to pull a little bit differently. So it's not gonna create this perfect green like I was mentioning before. It's going to create a version of green, but it's going to be a green that shifts more brown than anything because you are getting to the point where you are mixing more towards complementary colors rather than analogous. Woo! But another thing that we have to take into account is translucency and most makeup products 
are a little bit translucent. Even the most pigmented eyeshadows do have that kind of translucency to it. And so the great thing about this is that if you're not over blending, you can pair complementary colors and still have them blend into each other really beautifully. So let's say you wanted to pair a yellow and a purple. You can totally do that. It's just that the more that you blend, the more that you're gonna kind of start creating that brown shade. So in looks that you're wanting to create that are more complementary, you're going to just have to be conscious of not blending and blending and blending and blending and blending like you normally would. Because that translucency that you have in the eyeshadow helps it to look more layered over top of each other rather than um, some really thick dark color that just becomes brown because it's full pigment. And if you do really like the idea of complementary colors but you're just a little bit um, too nervous to go directly in with your yellow and your purple, for instance, you can just kind of use that whole side of the color wheel so that you are blending your purple into your red, into your orange, into your yellow, which is kind of what starts being created when you mix the two anyways, um, but you just have to make sure that you're not really over blending and over applying that pigmentation to the point where now you're just neutralizing the color and making it brown. Staying on the topic of translucency and makeup for a second, I talked a little bit about using white um, to mix into our primary colors at the beginning of the video. When you use a little bit of white, you can really brighten up a color. And when you use a lot of white, you can turn it into a pastel. But when we're looking at translucency in makeup, you can also layer those colors to create a brighter shade. So you're not actually mixing and changing the integrity of the initial shade by making it lighter or more neon. You're just almost amplifying that color to make it even brighter than it is on its own. So for instance, I have this kind of uh, bluey green color here, and then I have my white base. So when I layer that over my white, you can kind of see that it's not changing the tone or the color at all. It's still that um, same kind of like blue green color and it maintains its integrity, but you can see how much brighter it looks because we're dealing with that translucency of that eyeshadow. So it's pulling from the white to amplify that color um, rather than just having it over top of my natural skin tone, which um, is, you know, yellow and pink and all these kinds of different shades in here. So it's kind of detracting from that color and actually starting to neutralize it. So when we're looking at that you're actually seeing a more true version of that pigment because it's going over top of a pure white that's like a completely blank canvas so you're letting the true intensity and pigmentation of that color shine more so than when you're layering it over top of something that um, you know is now neutralizing it. So if you've ever had that moment where you see an eyeshadow in the pan and you're like, oh my God, that's so perfect, it's so gorgeous, and then you put it on and it just seems kind of like lackluster, like it wasn't exactly what you were expecting, you just have to remember that translucency because that color will be somewhat neutralized by the tones in your skin. So if you're ever doing a look where you really wanna amp up the true color um, and vibrancy of whatever product, you can kind of layer it over top of a white base to really make it pop. So I've said a couple times about neutralizing when we're talking about the color wheel. I want to delve a little bit into color correcting because this is something that has been very popular but it's often done very poorly. A lot of the times we see people using those color correctors in a way that just it doesn't make sense. So for instance, when we're looking at green color correctors, let's say, um, usually green color correctors are used to counteract any kind of redness. So it may be rosacea, acne, whatever. Again, we're working with that translucency. So you don't want to apply so much pigment, which a lot of people think in their mind, the more that I apply, the less you'll see the red. And color correcting might have always looked really off to you because sometimes it gets to a point where either now your face just looks green or now your face looks kind of like gray and muddy and weird. That just comes down to over application of product. So work with that translucency. Um, use tiny, small amounts to actually neutralize that color. Because again, you have to remember that any kind of redness on your face, even if it might feel like it's a pure, true red, it's not. You're dealing with um, other layers of skin that are over top. And like I said before, if the color you're starting with isn't a true color, which a lot of green color correctors aren't actually true, true green, and a lot of pimples aren't actually true, true red, then and the result of mixing those colors is not going to be exactly what you're expecting. So when you're actually looking at something like a zit, for example, it's going to be actually more of kind of like a pink tone a lot of the times, um, or even sometimes a little bit more of a purpley tone because you're dealing with those layers of your skin. So that redness is underneath a layer of your skin tone, which does shift the tone of that color. So naturally when you go into your color corrector, you can't use the exact 
opposite of red. <laughs> I hope this is making sense. I feel like I'm just literally rambling like a crazy person. So by not over applying that green color corrector, you're actually helping to really truly neutralize the kind of pinky red of the zit rather than if you apply green, which either results in just green or a color that you're really not expecting, like some kind of gray or whatever. And this is something that's really difficult because a lot of people can't just look at a color and say, okay, I know what colors were used to make that color up. All of those tones shift how the color you're putting over top is going to make it look. And this just comes with practice. Some people are naturally inclined towards color and they understand it really, really well. So when you're looking at color correctors and stuff like that, if that's something that you've been wanting to utilize but you feel like it hasn't been doing exactly what you're looking for, you really have to look at that color for what it actually is, not for what your mind thinks of it as immediately. So it's just something to think about and keep in mind because a lot of the times people feel like the more I add of that color, the better it will be. And even sometimes with blending, people are like, like I'll just add more yellow and more yellow and more yellow and it's still not resulting in what they're looking for. In situations like that, you may just not be using the correct color because you're not taking the initial color you were trying to work with for what it actually is. So again, when we look at something like subculture, you could look at that as a blue and say like, okay, I'm just gonna use a yellow to kind of blend it out because I think it's gonna result in a green and you're blending and you're blending and you're blending. But this color has so many other tones to it that you might still be getting that muddiness the whole way through. So the more that you can kind of identify what's going into a specific shade, the more that you can kind of figure out what shades are gonna work well with it. To talk a little bit more about neutralizing, I wanted to talk about um, lip shades. I think every person on this planet is searching for their like best nude lipstick. And so often we're disappointed by this because we get a shade that we think looks really good or like we swatch it on our hand and we're like, this is perfect. And then we get it home and we put it on and we're like, what the fuck happens? You have to remember again, you're working with the natural color of your lips. There's always going to be some kind of translucency to makeup. So let's say you had really naturally red pigmented lips and you went and got a more kind of like peachy nude. Well, when you put that on, it probably isn't going to result in exactly what you're looking for. It's probably gonna end up looking almost a little more coral toned. But if you grab a nude that has tones of a complementary color in it, okay, tones, not completely green. So with that, you can kind of look for a nude that has a little bit more of that olive tone to it. And that might end up looking a lot better on your lips because you're neutralizing that natural red tone of your lip. If you don't have particularly pigmented lips, like myself naturally, I don't have super, super pigmented lips. So I can kind of shop around um, colors that are a little bit closer to my skin tone or my natural lip color. So let's say that you had an olive skin tone, you might be able to kind of shop for something that's a little bit more yellow or a little bit more kind of leaning towards an orange or a peach. And that might still look really beautiful and complementary in your skin tone because you're not working to neutralize that color underneath. You're just kind of working to find something that's within your um, color family, so to speak. And when it comes to pairing lip colors with eyeshadows, kind of like we talked a little bit about before, a really easy, quick approach is to kind of pair lip colors that are either neutral, so that would be like a nude kind of color, more on like the brown side of things. Neutrals are things that go with absolutely anything, so that's like your beiges, your browns, all that kind of stuff. And nude lipsticks are kind of a form of that beige, so unless like, let's say for this, I paired this with a more kind of like blue pinky nude, um, it might look a little bit off because it's not as neutral and it's pulling those blue tones, whereas like I have these nice warm tones on my eye. By the way, I don't know if I remembered to go over this. From your purple red all the way to your yellow, warm tones. From your true purple all the way to your yellow green, cool tones. So I kind of have an eye look right now in this area of my warm tones. So let's say I had paired this look with a purple lipstick very poorly applied purple lipstick. These are technically kind of veering into the realm of being complementary colors, but for most people, this might be too overwhelming of a look for you, especially because we are dealing with multiple tones on that eye. So if the eyes were just yellow, it might look really cool in editorial, but when you kind of start to pull in that orange, well, now you're working with something that isn't complementary to purple. But let's say I had paired it with this kind of 
rustic burnt orange that's likely going to look and feel a lot less jarring because you're working with that analogous color scheme. So I'm keeping it all kind of in that realm there rather than venturing over into my cool tones. So a lot of the times people will say not to pair cool tones and warm tones. I think pairing them can look really, really cool and really neat and it can create really beautiful um, images, especially it's really beautiful in artwork when we have those complementary colors working with each other. If you're wanting to venture into doing more complementary lip pairings or blush pairings or whatever, I like to use a complementary color that has been a little bit muted um, or shifted just a little bit because for me, yellow and orange together are just very jarring. But, but if I'm looking for that kind of idea of complementary colors, I like to sort of shift up the color wheel a little bit. So instead of going this way, which is making it even more stark, I like to kind of shift back up towards the color I'm working towards. So, you know, making more of a kind of like purpley red and even probably adding a little bit of black to kind of mute that color a little bit. So like with this, if I wanted to kind of add a complementary toned lip to it, I would picture more of like a kind of dark, um, like wine purpley red color. So for me, something like this is a lot less jarring and a lot more kind of like aesthetically pleasing. Of course, it's all personal preference, but I prefer when I'm doing complementary colors to kind of pull in a complementary color that is a little bit more muted. The tone has kind of been changed up a little bit. So with this, we're still kind of dealing with that idea of orange and purple, but I've pulled in a little bit of red to the lip. I've pulled in a little bit of black to make it a a little bit more kind of neutral and muted. So we're not dealing with that super stark, bright, actual purple color, but we've got that kind of idea of that harmony between the uh, complementary tones. My makeup wipes literally look like an art exhibit right now. I don't know what's going on. So that's not to scare you away from using complementary tones, but rather if you're applying makeup and you feel like you put something on and it just doesn't feel quite right and you're not sure why, always reference back to the original color that you have that you're trying to kind of pair with. So let's say you had started with these yellow eyes and you put on your purple and you were just like, ooh, that looks so weird. Work back up that color wheel towards your original color and kind of add those tones in and it might start shifting that uh, color that you added to be a little bit more um, kind of visually appealing. Also in the realm of talking about translucency and neutralizing and all that fun stuff we've covered so far, it's also a great thing to know how to darken shades and you can darken shades by adding a little bit of the complementary color to it because again you are starting to create that brown color and by the way not all browns are created equal if you're mixing red and green it's going to create a different brown than when you mix yellow and purple blue and orange so on and so forth so when you're painting and stuff like that you can darken things by adding a little bit of that uh, complementary color to it but with makeup because you are dealing with that translucency i like to personally darken colors by using black so black is something that is so often added to palettes and people are always like, oh my God, fuck, like another black eyeshadow, Jesus Christ, what am I gonna use this for? And a lot of people find black eyeshadow kind of intimidating because it can be intimidating, especially if you're newer to makeup, newer to blending, all that kind of stuff. But again, we're working with that translucency, which is so great because you can take a little bit of that black eyeshadow and you can add it to any color to darken it up. So let's say I have this blue here, but I just want it to be a little bit darker. I can take a little bit of black eyeshadow and kind of mix it by blending to create a little bit of a deeper shade. So we're not changing the tone by adding a complementary color, we're just actually deepening that initial shade. And you can add as much black as you want to to kind of continue to deepen it up. So we can make an even darker blue, or you can add so much black that you're getting more into the realm of having a blue-based black. But it doesn't have to be all or nothing. You don't have to picture that black eyeshadow as just like, a black eyeshadow in your crease. So if you ever feel like you have a palette where you're like, oh, I really love this like purple shade for instance, but I just wish there was something a little bit darker to blend it out with, go ahead and grab your black eyeshadow and just add the tiniest, tiniest little bit on a more um, sparse brush, not something that's super dense because that's gonna deposit way more pigment. And you can deepen that shade yourself without needing like a little bit of a deeper plum and a little bit of a deeper whatever. When you're using your color theory and you're using that gift of translucency, you can really make your makeup collection work for you and you can kind of um, you know create things out of what you already have because so often we convince ourselves that we need more than what we have and this is a trap that working makeup artists fall into a lot as well they feel like they need to have absolutely everything in their kit but what you really need to know how to do is mix so that you can create anything out of a small amount of products so for instance, if I was still a working makeup artist, something like the Anastasia Lip Kit is like so great because you have your primaries down here, your white, your black. So I could really mix up any shade I needed to. Like let's say I was on set and someone was like, ooh, like I want like um, kind of like a forest green lip. 
totally, no problem. I can go run to my kit. I don't need a forest green lipstick. I need my primary colors so that I can mix up that shade to have it be whatever I want it to be. So as much as it's fun to go out and buy new makeup, it's also really um, exciting and um, freeing to feel like you can create whatever you want with these two hands and a brain and your eyes and your heart and your soul. Something that a lot of people really um, panic about. <laughs> and I feel like this is people from like my generation that grew up with magazines telling you what eyeshadow to wear based on your eye color. <laughs> I really don't want any of you guys to be looking at any of these things as rules that you have to follow because as much as um, you know, it's, it's interesting and it's fun, it's not something that needs to um, restrain you from enjoying your time. But when it comes to what might look good on you or what might, you know, make your eyes pop. You can reference back to your color wheel, babe. So for instance, I have these baby blues. Pairing them with these kind of complementary colors will definitely kind of make that color stand out even more because it is such a stark contrast. So for me, I do usually kind of prefer eyeshadows that fall in this realm that are more kind of a contrast to this blue. So I prefer kind of like triadic color schemes. So possibly, you know, using kind of um, yellow and red and the Anchor color obviously is blue, my eyes. And I'm not as big of a fan on myself of any kind of thing that feels more um, kind of analogous. So I don't love green eyeshadow on myself. I don't love purple eyeshadow on myself. And it's so funny to me when people are like, I have poopy brown eyes. You're smack dab in the middle, man. That means fucking everything looks dope on you. So that's just me, but it is personal preference. Complimentary colors are usually what's recommended when it comes to like eye colors and stuff like that. Um, but for me, it's just, it really is personal preference. That is also why neutrals are so popular because no matter what color or creed, brown is the answer. Brown is gonna look good on everyone, neutral, Gorgeous, perfect. So you guys, that is everything for me today. I mean, not really, truly, I could go on and there were so many other things that I wanted to like add to this and different ways to show you things. And I'm, I feel like I'm failing the subject. <laughs> it just truly is like such a cool thing and it's so fun to kind of play around with once you have the basics of it down. So hopefully this helped you guys and you think this is interesting and I didn't just spend like an hour rambling for nothing. That's everything for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you next time. Peace out.